second part of products, looking at the product life cycle. So here's the product life cycle from a past paper question. And the product life cycle um, is a diagram that shows sales of the vertical axes and time along the bottom. So it's plotting the um, sales of time of a product. So it goes through being introduced where you start to get sales, then the growth when you get a very steep gradient, maturity when things level off and then decline. Here's a slightly more complicated diagram because it's got an extra strategy in like saturation there. Sometimes they include that, sometimes they don't just to make it a little bit more confusing for you. Um, but the typical questions on an exam are either label a product life cycle or explain what's happening in each um, stage. And they want you to think about sales, revenue and costs. So here's a little summary. In the launch, you've got very low sales. Not many people know about it. High costs of promotion though, because you're trying to get the brand name out there or the product name get people interested in it. During the growth sales, you've got sales increasing really rapidly. So you've got a really big increase in revenue. Advertising may start to be reduced at this point. So you might start to see the, um, the costs going down a little bit, depends on the product. Maturity is when you get the peak, you get your revenue at its highest. Um, sales now start to slow because what you might be, what might be happening is that competitors having seen your success are coming up with their own versions of the product as well. So you might start to see, um, new people getting the product, but they're going to the competitors at that point. Saturation, again, sales are staying the same. They might just start to dip a little bit. Um, revenue might fall as competitors, um, are getting more traction in the market. They're attracting more of the competitors. You might start to see them stealing some of your customers and you might need to give discounts as well to, to, um, retain some of your current customers, keep them loyal. And then decline is when the customers have switched to competitors or it's a product that's gone out of fashion and your sales and your revenue is falling. An extension strategy, this common question as well that follows on from those uh, labeling the diagram and describe the stages. An extension strategy is any attempt to try and stop that product going into the decline stage, maintain the sales, maybe grow the sales again. So a few examples of extension strategies could be bringing out new versions, new packaging, um, trying to sell to new markets and new users, um, new features on those products. So I'm sure you can think of um, some examples. If we think about Coca-Cola, very um, long product life cycle, it's had very, still very popular, but they did start bringing out, I think from the 1980s, new versions, um, Diet Coke, we have Cherry Coke, all those different ones. Um, Coke Zero now as well. So all extension strategies. Explain the usefulness of product life cycles to businesses when making decisions. So what they can do is um, try, if they've come up with a product idea, they could try to forecast whether the product is worth developing. So because they could um, sort of forecast what the revenue will be and then estimate what their costs are going to be as well and, and see if it's going to be profitable or not. Again, that's it's a bit of a funny reason because it's just a forecast. You don't really know what's going to happen, certainly with revenue. Um, they might be tracking it because they might be thinking about, well, when do we need to create an extension strategy? Maybe start thinking about that at the maturity stage um, when sales start to level off. And they can use it to estimate when costs are going to be at the highest. So development, launch of that product, when there's lots of promotion, maybe when they need to develop a new extension strategy as well. Um, so they can plan for that with that the cash flow, making sure they've got those sources of finance. So looking at some nice past paper, it's quite simple past paper questions here. So we've got a, a diagram here about smartwatches and it's saying which stage of the product life cycle are they in? And it's this quite steep uh, incline here. So I would say that looks like growth to me. And then an older question here, um, product life cycle for audio and video equipment. So which part of the product life cycle do these figures appear to have been taken when you're going through like uh, 1,243 million going down to 812 million. So it definitely seems like there's a decline there. So that would be decline. <laughs>